Welcome back to another episode of the Crypto Serpents. And if you do enjoy the videos, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Whoa, what is this? So Ripple has no plans to settle with the SEC over a lawsuit on XRP. Wait, what? Now, before you run, before you start to panic that we're going to be in another year of this lawsuit and it's going to drag it until March, stay till the end. Stay till the end. Now, well, let's unpack this. So according to Charles Gasparino, senior correspondent at Fox Business News, Ripple doesn't plan to settle. So he reckons breaking Ripple legal team tell Fox Business they have no plans to settle with the SEC enforcement over the lawsuit on XRP. Confident that can show Gary Gensler in pursuing the case is picking winners and losers in the crypto business to the detriment of innovation. Story developing. So Ripple wants to prove a point. We know Ripple wants to prove a point. And we know that if they really, really wanted to settle, this would have happened a long time ago. But they will settle on their own terms. Just be clear, and I wanted to you know, make sure I mentioned this as quick as possible because I know you guys don't watch the whole thing, which is still crazy. They will settle, but they'll settle on their own terms. Before you start to think that uh, this is going to drag out for another seven, eight months, so this is a never-ending story, be very mindful of what information you take in and how you take it in because sometimes you can really take something in in the wrong way and give yourself a very different perspective. Now... When we saw this come out on Twitter, we saw all the things that they're mentioning on here, right? But then you see, obviously, the amount of likes, comments, retweets, ah, it's gone off. It's gone really, really, really viral. So, Jeremy Hogan explains it beautifully. He says, legal teams never say they want to settle. It's a sign of weakness. And you can tell, you know, obviously, like, it's a very, very popular reply. And that is true. You know, what legal team in their right mind would go on national, international TV and say, yeah, we don't really believe we have a strong case. So right now we're, we're seriously hoping um, Gary Gensler gives us mercy and settles and slaps us with a fine. No one would say that. And so this can be very quickly taken out of, um, out of proportion, very quickly. And so why would the news, the media, somebody like Charles put something like this on. Well, it's to get you off guard. Do you know how many people probably saw this and sold their XRP? And do you know how many people were thinking potentially about getting XRP and then didn't get XRP because they saw this? And then when a settlement happens out of nowhere and the price moons, whoops. That's generally what the media does when they're wrong. Whoops. So that... That's very, very important. And I, I really want you to, to be aware of that and to be conscious of this because this doesn't mean anything. Just because they said, this is what we're after. This is what we're going. We want to go for the win. We want to be the good guys, you know, that put the SEC in their place. That doesn't mean they're not going to settle. It just means that they're going to play a little bit hard to get, but they will settle. Now, Songbird, the SBGB token will start trading on September 27th. So your SPG will also be distributed on this date, which is the expected time when the SPG network will be accessible and stable. So there's been a lot of information and news and you know things going around and around about this, right? But I just want you guys to be aware, conscious of the fact that anyone who's eligible to receive something will receive it. It's just that you will receive it when it's time to receive it. And there was a news that came out a couple of days ago that said, you know, um, you know, Songbird is out now, you know, go check your wallet, but that's not right. Now, there is the, this particular document that was published yesterday about the Flare Network, talking about Songbird, uh, Songbird, the Canary Network for Flare, how to check your balance, how to do that, how, you, how the co tokens will be distributed. One XRP token will be 0.15 and how you do all of that. So we will talk. We will touch base on this as we get closer towards the end of the month and we'll, we'll talk about it again. But for now, if you went into your exchange or went into your wallet and you didn't see it, well, guess what? Nobody saw it, okay? So just be, just be mindful of that. We will talk about price today. Of course, we'll talk about price. We've got many, many charts to analyze and many things to talk about. You know, if XRP can stay above 105, then we can target 135. 
If the support is broken, then potentially 78 cents could come around. So there's many, many different scenarios and we'll go through all of them today. So we'll go through a lot of scenarios around what that looks like and talk about, you know, all these different um, aspects and elements. Uh, um, but, you know, one, one thing at a time, you know, it's uh, really, really fascinating. You know, there is this particular motion to seal exhibits as well um, that, that has come out. Not, not too much, you know, to, to report on there, but, you know, really right now today, what's really, really important to unpack, to understand is the charts, give you guys a little bit of a guide on where are we at, where are we going? But what came out about the, the uh, Ripple team saying that we're going for the win, that's not, that's nothing, right? That is not, nothing for you and I um, as long-term investors of XRP to, to, to be concerned about. Let's jump into Atani. Let's have a look at some of the indicators over there. Okay, so as we begin to look at the price, we're looking at, uh, right now we're looking at the daily charts and we can see the kind of moves that we've been making, right? You can kind of see like this particular line that, that has been that has been forming. And we are above the, you know, the 50 day moving average. So we are staying above the 50 day moving moving average. We're sitting at a dollar eight. You can see the MACD that is sitting on still on a bearish. We've got Bitcoin at the moment that is slightly starting to make moves, right? So it's sitting at 48. 48.6, it was at 47.9, you know, not you know, a couple of hours ago. So that there is usually, a, you know, an early sign that, you know, things could be starting to come back, but very early, very, very, very early days. Because again, the MACD on the daily is still bearish. And I know that we keep saying the same thing in the last couple of days, but that is what we've been saying. Now, when we look at the hourly, we can see that where we were, we we're sitting at 105, we're now sitting at 108. So we could be, it looks like we could be move, making a move now to jump back into the 110s and above. I think, you know, attraction above 110 would be really good, really handy to see how we perform above 110. Now, as I zoom out and look, you know, we have been in 110 territory before. So we could touch 110 again and then maybe come back down or touch 110 and then continue to move up and go towards 12, 13 cents, which will be our next moving average that we would go across. But you can see on the four hour that, you know, we were bearish, but just about starting to, to, to go above. Now, I think we will go 110 and then, you know, either continue up or, or come back down again. Now we are 3.28% down for the day. And you can see here on the 12 hour, the amount of, you know, the amount of activity, you know, has shrunk right down. There's not that much activity happening right now as we speak. So that's really, really important as well to take into, into consideration. But overall, we are above the moving average for um, uh, 50. A move to 10, uh, 110, 111 maybe even, you know, will take us back to here, 112 potentially. But do we go continue go up or do we come back down again? At the moment, based on the 12 and the daily, looks like we would come back down before we go up. However, let's keep a very, very close eye over the next 12 hours and then come back to it. Let's have a look at some drawings. Okay, so we begin to look at the drawings. We begin with this particular, right? So over here, um, as I look at this, I'm looking at this particular formation. I'm looking at uh, how this particular movement that we're making right now. So we're going to break out of this wedge. Once we break out of this wedge, then we will, we will push very, very fast towards 121. Now, some of the key targets, these are the very, very much the key targets that we need to look for. Resistance at 112, resistance at 125, resistance at 132, and resistance at 140. Now, if you're a short-term trader, going for that like you know, it's amazing right so this is this is great to, you know scalp get get some wins on the board and then, and then go for it right so that would be the four targets if you're you know if you're a day trader but the key here is buy when the price breaks above the falling wedge buy when the price goes above the falling wedge not before because you could you could you know be in a loss after the falling wedge that's the resistance zone Above the falling wedge, support above the falling wedge, then go for it. That's that's the, the advice. As a long-term holder, none of this matters. Now, there are some things and some suggestions saying, you know, that $3.90 by, by the end of November, but I think we, we, we will do that way, way, way quicker than that. Like, I don't think we're going to have to wait until three, uh, until the end of November uh, for us to get to 3.90. I think we're going to get to 3.90 very, very, very quickly. Now, let's talk about some major support, um, some major resistance and some major support. So major support at a dollar, major support at 95 cents, 88 cents, 82 and 76. If we break a dollar and we continue to go down, they are the key points. 
dollar, 95 cents, 88 cents, 82 cents, 76 cents. They are very, very, very important. Major resistance as we go up, 120, 134, 139, 154, and 170. They are, take a screenshot if you want, very, very important as we, as we be, begin to get an understanding of the price. Up, down, where are we going? Very, very crucial. So from here, I think we will, like, I think we, the move that, that is coming is the move towards $1.15 and $1.20, that $1.21, that's, I think, the next move. And remember, now this is from a while back, but I wanted to bring it back, that there are two scenarios at play at the moment. You know, we could be going full linear with the red line or the green line, which means that we go a little bit longer to go and then we start to move and make waves towards um, going into the double digits, 20, 17s, 18s, 20s, and all that, um, all the way up, you know, to 55 and beyond. And also remember that what I mentioned about, you know, Bitcoin and how Bitcoin could potentially run and how that could impact the XRP price. But has anything changed in my perspective about the goals and where we're going and what we're going to be hitting? No, nothing's changed. Does the Fox News news shock me? You know, it makes me weak thinking, oh God, we're going to be here for a while. No, because a settlement is always around the corner and they are negotiating. I know it. You know it. Now, if you do enjoy the videos, don't forget to hit that like or subscribe button. As always, thank you. And I look forward to see you on the next one.